Alright, full disclaimer, I'm not an endgame Wuthering Waves player. Like, not even close. During the first month of the game, I did play it, it's not that I didn't, but I also played other games too, notably Genshin and Star Rail. Because of my split time between games, I haven't been able to really devote myself to either like I want to, and honestly it shows in all the games, not just Wuthering Waves. Heck, not even Genshin and Star Rail either for that matter, really. Uh, I even did a video about this entire topic just a couple of weeks ago or so, titled There's Too Many Gotcha and Live Service Games to Play. And it's something I'm going to have to figure out if I want to happily progress in all the games I care about. Uh, and again, not even just the gotcha ones. Uh, whether that means I'll have to reduce time in one of the games or rotate patches while leaving Fremagems or Stellar Jades or Asteroids on the table or whether that means I'm going to have to rotate a game out of rotation every other day. Uh, whatever the case, it's something I'm going to have to figure out, but that's on me. Um, but the reason I'm saying this up front is because I just want full transparency here. I'm not an in-game Wuthering Waves player yet. I'm probably just now into the early mid-game. Uh, I intend to get to the end game just at my own pacing. Uh, but no, right now, I don't do big PP numbers of damage. You know, uh, my characters aren't high leveled yet. They're not very built yet. None of that stuff. So, I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, with all that said, though, I don't believe I have to be an end game player or do tons of damage yet to have an opinion on the topic I want to discuss. It's something I believe anyone should be able to form an opinion on, whatever level of veterancy they may have in Wuthering Waves. And that a topic, uh, that opinion? Uh, the character kits in Wuthering Waves? Uh, com you know, coupled with the combat system? They provide a fantastic mid-core combat experience. Now, first of all, you know, what does midcore mean? It's a gaming term that generally means a little too involved to be considered completely casual, but not so hardcore that it only appeals to the sweats. Midcore can refer to a game as a whole or towards particular aspects of a game, such as the midcore difficulty or midcore execution or mechanics combat but you know normally it's all just considered as a whole uh, the term is especially used in mobile game markets but nowadays it gets used in gaming discussions in general as with any term that relies on people's experiences though Midcore is just as subjective as casual and hardcore, the other terms that sets its boundaries. Uh, what's considered casual to some can still be considered a pretty involved and almost hardcore experience to another, and vice versa. Uh, as a result, there's no agreed upon definition of what one would consider midcore. However, just as we can do with casual and hardcore as terms, uh, we can come to general consensus. Most just agree that Mario Kart would be considered casual, and Elden Ring would be considered hardcore. Could there be outlier judges out there? Yeah, sure, but it's all subjective. Uh, but those positions are so widely accepted, you know, that Mario Kart would be casual and Elden Ring would be hardcore. Uh, that you wouldn't get any pushback for stating either opinion, even if you don't put the obligatory in my opinion, before the statement. So, for midcore, the best we can do is say that it tries to lie somewhere comfortably in the middle of that spectrum. As a result, you may find that some casual players actually find the game's goals tangible or that the game isn't overly demanding. Uh, as well, you may find that some hardcore gamers feel that the game's goals and mechanics are adequately satisfying and challenging enough to keep their engagement. The characters' kits and Wuthering Waves feels like they've found this happy medium, and to the game's positive in my opinion. The current lineup of 1.1 rate-ups really show it in how they function. 
with Dan Jin and San Hua and especially Jinsi. Jinsi's kid is just a blast to play. It satisfies me by feeling rewarding for doing things correctly, but it's not so punishing that a screw up here or there means instant failure or death. At the same time, it does require some thought and deliberate input, but the inputs and execution aren't so hard and so airtight that you have to play like an esports finalist to get the most out of her. And if character kits like this is what Wuthering Waves is going to be offering as we move ahead, then I'm locked in pretty hard. <laughs> so how does Jinxie's kit work anyway? Well, her in-game ability descriptions are long. Like, super long. CVS receipt long, even. <laughs> uh, in fact, I will be completely honest here and say that if there's any barrier to entry, it's not playing her, or playing any of the other characters for that matter, but rather it's just getting the terminology down and knowing what all the words in her ability descriptions mean so you can understand just what she does. Dude, I swear, these games are just getting crazier and crazier with their descriptions. Genshin is guilty of it. Wuthering Waves is guilty of it. League of Legends has even become guilty of it. Actually, League was probably guilty of it first because it's older. <laughs> um, I'm not going to cover for Wuthering Waves on this one. They could have made this easier to read or at least made toggles available for shorter explanations because in actual practice, it sounds more complicated than it is. <laughs> to be honest, I'm probably going to do a rant about that topic in general. Uh, these games gotta cut down on the wording. Jeez. Uh, I digress though. Uh, to our luck, the game does give brief rundowns. So I'm just gonna refer to that. Like all characters, Jinshi has a basic attack string. She has a heavy attack. She has a mid-air attack, which by the way, the backwards cartwheel after landing is the prettiest, most fluid animation ever. I, I love it. Uh, it just looks so graceful. <laughs> She has her skill, which is just kind of a lunge attack. And she has her ultimate attack where she summons Joy the Dragon. There's also her intro and outro skills for switching in or out of other characters. However, after doing four basic attacks or switching into her with her intro skill, her skill's icon will glow. Cast your skill now and she changes into an empowered stance. Needless to say, in her empowered stance, her attacks are empowered. <laughs> For instance, her mid-air attack is now this. And her skill is now this. But the most important thing to note is do four more basic attacks in her empowered stance and her skill lights up again. Cast it this time though and the old dragon boy will come out and evaporate your enemies. <laughs> it's so freaking cool dude and it feels like the perfect amount of player involvement for this kind of game. It's involved enough to be interesting for players of higher skill ranges but it's simple enough that most anyone can pull it off. 
just basic attack four times, pressure glowing skill, basic attack four more times, and pressure skill again. However, that's only part of the fun. See, her meter at the bottom represents a multiplier. The higher her meter is, the more damage that blast and enhanced attacks will do. And that's where other characters come in, because Jinxie's meter fills up when other characters perform attribute damage or coordinated attacks. So, here's one of Jinxie's best party members, Yenlin. Verena is too, but to keep things simple and for time's sake, I'm only going to go over this with one teammate. Oh yeah, so Yenlin. What does Yenlin do, and why is she good to play with Jinxie? Well, Yenlin does her skill, uh, and she gets a lightning empowerment for a few seconds that makes her basic attacks chain lightning between enemies that are hit. Simple. Landing attacks charges Yenlin's meter. When Yenlin's meter gets full, you can use it to blast all enemies and activate coordinated lightning attacks that work even if you aren't Yenlin. And this is what you want with Jinxi, as coordinated attacks builds up Jinxi's meter. After building up her meter with Yenlin's coordinated attacks, you can then prepare to unleash an even stronger Dragon Blast with Jinxi's skill combo. And there you have it. This pattern is satisfying. Everything has a place, everything has a purpose. I'm not great at the rotations as it is, especially when I try to add Varina's coordinated attacks into the mix. Uh, not to mention there's other timers and mechanics I didn't mention, but again, for brevity's sake, I'm leaving them out. Still though, this is great gaming. Knowing how the character's kits work is very important, but executing it is still easy enough. It's not as tough as, say, King of Fighters combo trials, but it's demanding enough to feel rewarding for executing it. However, with all the indicators and generally simple inputs, I feel it's accessible enough for more casual players to not feel totally lost, or at the very least, it's accessible enough for them to get better at it. On my PlayStation controller, it's just square, 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 triangle to get in Genshi's stance, and square, 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 triangle again to cast the Dragon Blast. For Yenlin, it's just press triangle once to activate lightning attacks, uh, square to attack until her meter gets full, and then activate the coordinated attacks. There's a lot of little stuff in between, such as counters and dodging and running around, and you know, there's some other stuff too, but that stuff is more universal and not necessarily kit dependent. Uh, there are some other mechanics in Jinxie's kit, but uh, for the most part, this is this is how it operates. Yeah. And other characters have interesting kits too, even the four stars. Danjin's kit is based around strikes using her health, and she has particular combo strings as well. Basic attacks don't harm her, but striking with her skill does. However, after building up her meter some, you can gain health back by consuming the bar with a heavy attack. Classic health-based gameplay, sure, but it's interesting and pretty fun to manage. Sanhua creates an Ice Prism, Ice Glacier, or Ice Thorn when you use her skill, ultimate, or intro skill, respectively. You can detonate these prisms, glaciers, and thorns by timing her moving meter. Uh, time it within the marker and she detonates them. Timing it can be tricky, especially in the heat of battle, but you can make the detonation zone on the meter larger under conditions such as landing her basic attack string or casting her skill. So if you're not great at timing the little detonation zone, just work towards making it a bigger one. It's little things like that that makes this a pretty good mid-core experience. It all makes for a fun experience that's really growing on me. 
In my first two impressions videos, I'd said that my first impressions of the combat was that it's cool. But I think that was maybe an understatement, because like, it seems like it's even cooler than I originally thought. It's very accessible, yet it's very engaging at the same time. If I were to compare it to say, Genshin, uh, while the gameplay there does involve particular rotations and setups as well, I do feel Worthering Waves might be more mechanically involved, or at least it's heading that way. And when you mix it into the combat itself, the perfect dodging and counter timings, as well as just the generally more lethal and beefier enemies, I think this game presents a great experience for mid-core gamers. That's to say nothing of its future longevity, whether it will provide meaningful gameplay loops or anything of that nature. We'll all just have to wait and see about that as time goes on. But as far as the gameplay itself goes, if Gen C is any indicator of what we have to look forward to in the future, I can't wait. <laughs> Yenlin was the character that gave me initial hope, and Genshi is the one who solidified it. And as someone who does lean closer to the hardcore side of gaming, personally, uh, I can only imagine that as we get into tougher fights and challenges as I approach in-game, uh, my experience is just going to get that much better. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Wuthering Waves' kit design so far with Jensi and to a degree Yinlin as my indicators. I think anyone who sees the game and thinks it looks cool should just give it a try. Just just do it. Whether you're more casual, mid-core, or hardcore. Because I think the combat experience is middle of the road enough for most players to find something in the gameplay worthy of their time. Particularly generalist gamers and those that think they fit somewhere in the middle. That said, <laughs> I'm, I'm done. I'm getting out of here. I'm off to play some more because, yeah, I'm having fun. <laughs> it's pretty cool, yo. The game is pretty lit. Peace out, yo.